Hallelujah. Hallelujah, everyone. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We just praise God for an awesome first service. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on and give God glory for that. Glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. And we just want to continue to praise and magnify our God. Hallelujah. So come on and stand to your feet. Hallelujah. And just begin to reverence the presence of the Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, stand to your feet and just begin to acknowledge him today. Glory to God. We want to sing unto him and we want to dance unto him. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on in this place. Hallelujah. Just begin to clap your hands unto our God. Yeah. Scream. 
gonna raise the praise up in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's get in the spirit. Father, we bless you. We thank you today, Father. We bless and honor you. We thank you for the spirit of prayer and intercession coming upon this service today, Father. As we partake in praise and worship, God, we thank you that you're glorious. We thank you that you're magnificent. We thank you, Father, that you're worthy of all the praise, honor, and glory. Your word declares, Father, that God, that the glory of the latter house shall be greater than that of the former house. And so, Father, as we partake of your heavenly presence today, we thank, that, we thank you that glory is being revealed. Glory is being released today, Father. That God, as we praise, as we worship, as we create the atmosphere, glory is being released in this region. Glory is being released on the west side of Chicago. Glory is being released, Father, all over this country. Glory is being released all over the globe. Right now, Father, we ask right now that your kingdom would come, that your will would be done right now, Father, even as there is war and upheaval and uncertainty in the land, Father. We thank you that the glory of God would then begin to invade and begin to arrest all demonic activity father that is taking place in the name of Jesus father we thank you right now we invoke your presence we invoke your presence we invoke your authority we invoke your glory father to arrest the environment father in the mighty name of Jesus take us to another realm of glory father take us to a deeper realm of your presence this morning father in the name of Jesus thank you that glory comes father to disrupt father evil communications glory is coming to disrupt disrupt father sin and upheaval glory is coming to disrupt father any demonic activity glory is coming to disrupt and uproot father anything that is of the devil right now father we bless you we honor you and we praise you for what you're doing right now in the midst of your people you said to call upon you and you will show us great and mighty things father you said to call upon you and that you would answer God and that you would deliver us father and so father we pray today Father, that your glory would be released, Father, that your people would step into glory, that your people would walk in another dimension of glory, that your people would walk in another realm of glory, that glory would be released over our homes, glory would be released over our government, glory would be released over this country, glory would be released over our schools, glory would be released, Father, over our regions, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, invade God. Arrest right now. Come down, Father. Rend the heavens and come down, Father. Move by your spirit. Bring liberation. Bring freedom, Father, to your people, to the church of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we bless you right now. Thank you for intercession, God. Let there be a spiritual awakening, Father, an awakening to glory, an awakening to the knowledge of the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we bless you right now. We dishonor you, God. We honor you. We honor you. We are zero, God. We attribute glory, majesty, might, dominion, and power to you because you're glorious, because you're worthy. Hallelujah. Because you're high and lifted up. Give the Lord praise.
for a few moments. The Bible says, clap your hands, O oh ye people. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silent. Come on, prophesy, you're ready. Receive the downpour. Yes, we're ready. Move in this place and move upon this people and shake us, O oh God. We're ready for the downpour. Yes, you got it. Come on, the spirit of transformation comes upon this place. The spirit of the overcomer breaks out upon this people. The downpour is here. The downpour is here. He's pouring out, pouring out. He's pouring out, pouring out. You say pouring out, pouring out. Pouring out. Pour it out, pour it out. Come on, prophesy. Come on, prophesy. That's it. Keep pushing. Pour it out. He's pouring out power. He's pouring sing songs like he's Jehovah he supplies above and beyond he is Jehovah and he provides above and beyond he is Jehovah he supplies come on your supply is here he's supplying above and beyond he's also providing above and beyond and as a result we won't settle for less because we know there's more that's found in you. Come on, there's our new songs of birth when we press into a place of receiving from the heavens. May Jireh manifest himself as the one who supplies above and beyond. And may we as a people never settle for less because we know there's more that's found in you. Come on, put your hands together and give God praise, people. Hallelujah. Let's thank God for our worship team. Oh, yes. We'll never settle for less because we know there's more that's found in you, Jesus. Oh, yes. Oh, we give you glory. We give you honor, oh God. We give you glory and honor and strength, oh God. We say be exalted in your majesty. Hallelujah. Well, while you're standing, we're going to go ahead and receive the ministry gift in the person of Apostle Sean Echols. So as he comes, saints, let's receive our brother, our friend, our comrade in the kingdom all the way from Houston, Texas. A man of covenant, a man on an assignment, a son of promise. Rivers, he's no stranger here, so let's receive him with a hearty hand clap of praise and let's draw from the grace. Apostle Sean. Glory to your name, Jesus. What a wonder you are, Lord. What a wonder. stand in amazement of you, Lord, and we bless you. Be seated. I'm at home. I'm at home. I'm at home away from home, uh, so I don't have to do all those traveling preacher antics, right? I don't have to do all of it, right? Like, I'm home. Like, I'm home. Y'all done got me stirred up, man. Joker be ready to preach from these rafters. all the way in I greet you in the name of the Lord I'm so grateful for this opportunity Rivers y'all know I love y'all 
I love, I love, I love being able to be amongst family. And I'm so grateful. Time is getting away from us, so I'm not going to prolong the time. All right? Uh, you've been blessed by the preacher of our family on this morning at 830. So <clears throat> it's my favorite preacher in the whole world. <clears throat> My favorite preacher in the whole world. If I wasn't saved and I heard her open up my mouth, I would just be slain right there in my seat. She does it for me. She does it for me. She does it for me. I mean that and I'm saved. So I don't even exaggerate or stretch because that's a lie. And you lie, you fry. That's how I was raised. <clears throat> but I am grateful to God. Uh, for my wife, who is absolutely amazing. I'm grateful to God for Apostle Garner and Prophetess Yolanda. I absolutely love them. I love them not just in private. I love them in public. I love them in public. I'm grateful to God. My life has been upgraded since we've met, as he mentioned, in 2017. And I'm the better for it. And I am truly, truly honored uh, for it. And I'm not going to belabor the time because I do got a word. I'm going to give you a few scraps. She didn't, she didn't give y'all an entree. I'm going to give you a few scraps. I was praying about this meeting, and I, I was really excited, if possible, because the Lord even spoke to me concerning you. And the Lord gave me a word. I want you to stretch your hands towards Apostle, because this word is going to hit him, whether you agree with it or not. It's about to erupt in his life. But the Lord said, Apostle, that there was a greater grace and dimension of fathering that was coming upon you, as well as upon this movement of rivers. He said, you come into a season where you'll begin to release a greater grace to father. And the thing about a father is that while mentors can give instructions, fathers leave inheritances. A mentor cannot leave an inheritance. A father leaves inheritance. And the Lord said that you're coming into a season where sons and daughters will begin to come. And they will begin to, they will begin to come and cleave. They will come and cleave cleave because they will give witness with their own mouths that they have found life here under your leadership under your covering under your care and there is a shift that God is bringing about in your life as from Abram to Abraham says the Lord see because Abram means exalted father but after his encounter with Melchizedek, he became Abram of God Most High, Abraham, the father of many nations. And God said he's going to establish a new dimension of fathering and you won't find yourself striving with sons and daughters and he'll even remove the pain of previous seasons where you've extended your hand and extended your heart only to be burnt by those who were looking for a position and jockeying a title but God said I'll bring those who share oneness and sentiments who bear your DNA and even share your convictions on the things pertaining to Jesus and his kingdom said the Lord it will be a strong people who will make easy building out the things that God has put in your life and he said I will establish this says the Lord hallelujah he will perform this word in your life somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise it is a phenomenal blessing and privilege to be in the place and under the leadership of a father. See, because many people are operating as the Abrams. These exalted fathers. But Abraham was a father of many nations. And whenever you find yourself under a father, you will be able to access inheritance. And I don't have time to teach on that because I got a word for you. <clears throat> But in this season, we need fathers. We need fathers. I'm not going to belabor the time. Turn with me to James chapter 4. This is a word for you. This is a word for this generation. And I want you to hear it in love. I only come for your advancement. 
I only come for your betterment. And I trust that transformation will be in the wake of this meeting. God, I come through with your wind, Lord, and do what can only be orchestrated and performed by the hand of God. Be upon me mightily, Lord, to speak with both clarity as well as precision. Only what it is that you have in your heart, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. James 4, 6, and 7 says this, but he giveth more grace. Somebody say more grace. More grace. Wherefore, he said, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. My focus is going to come from the seventh verse where it says very simply, submit yourselves to God. Somebody say first. first. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. For those of you who are taking notes, which I strongly advise, if I was dealing with a theme of thought, it would be the shift in submission. The shift in submission. Submission, by way of definition, is to arrange under. It means to subordinate. It means to subject, to be subject, to be put in subjection, to subject one's self to obeying. To submit to one's control and to yield to one's admonition and advice. This was a Greek word and it was used in the military meaning to arrange a division of troops in military fashion under the command of a leader. In non-military use, it was a voluntary attitude of coming alongside, cooperating, assuming responsibility, and carrying a burden. Are you with me? Yes. Now I'm going to give you my definition. It means to have a posture that doesn't fight, resist, or refute what the Lord is presenting to us at a given moment. Submission. The prophet declared this morning that there was a shift taking place, but I'm going to tell you this. What she didn't mention, but God is mentioning, is that those who will move with it are those who are operating in submission. I will not have the ability to articulate everything that God has given me, but I want you to know this, that submission is going to lead to your success. In this season, it's the submitted that will be successful, that will be prosperous, that will find themselves advancing and accelerating. I'm telling you this, in the kingdom, it is completely polar opposite to how things operate in the natural. I understand that we have corporate structures and policies and cultures, but I'm telling you this, there is a culture of the kingdom that has to be ascribed to for all those who believe in the name of Jesus. And there are things in the kingdom that are contrary to culture, natural culture, corporate culture, because Jesus said, listen, they were arguing about who was greatest among them. He said, listen, in the world, the greatest one calls the shots and is celebrated. He said, but it's not so over in this kingdom. In the kingdom that I'm causing you to arise in, he said, those who are least among you will walk in the greatest. The least who are among you shall be the greatest and he shall be the servant of all. He began to put honor upon those who took the position of servitude. He said, I'll begin to put a glory upon those who have a heart to serve. It's a voluntary attitude to align with and even walk out and carry out that which is not even completely understood. We have to remember that Jesus taught the disciples many things that they did not completely understand. But whenever Jesus gave them an assignment, because they were able to get behind it, because they were fully behind him. All right? 
You have to get this. See, because the reason the generation struggles so much is because there's been a lack of sons, those who would manifest the very nature, image, and likeness of Christ, right? We've been trying to emulate the nature of strangers and not the son. See, but Jesus said in John 10 that my sheep know my voice and a, come on scribes, a stranger we will not follow. Yes, this coming move of God is going to be springboarded by submission. In many regards, the believers of this generation has been, by and large, unsubmitted. Hear me out. We follow Jesus at our own pace and we've maintained a distance that would not irritate our flesh. While all the while there's been an invitation for us to come closer. It's going to get a little bit tighter, but just walk with me. The reason being is because we have refused to allow the deeper work of surrender to penetrate and to seize our hearts. We're going to go to an end that's going to be glorious, but I come to cut the clamps that's been that has restricted you to a place of mediocrity when there is a purpose of grandiose and, and of influence and of power and prestige over your life, okay? So just go with me. But we have refused and we failed to develop the attributes that would actually demonstrate that Jesus is Lord in our lives. We should be preaching all the time and use our words whenever necessary. Your life should be continuously demonstrating the fact that Jesus is my Lord. Every aspect of your life, right? Then we wouldn't have to deal with the people who are asking the question within this generation, where is Jesus in our day? The truth of the matter is that significant moves of the Spirit of God requires the collaboration of the surrendered hearts of his people. You will never see a significant move of the Spirit of God when you have half-hearted, barely bowed type of followers. These are those who turned the world upside down. They modeled everything that they had seen and received of him. But I want you to know that while in previous seasons God tolerated your yieldedness, in this hour, he's demanding submission. Listen, and I don't want you to hear this with the religious influence, see, because the enemy would want you to process submission as suppression. Yes. It's the spirit of this age. That's exactly what it is. Because he understands that God can do the most only through those who are completely yielded and dead to self. I told apostle this morning on the way over here that whenever the gospel is accurately preached, it's always going to include two crosses. The proper presentation of the gospel of Jesus Christ always requires two crosses. His and yours. If any man is going to follow me, let him what? Take up his cross daily and follow me. James chapter 4 verse 7, preacher. I came all the way to Houston to tell you this. In the kingdom of God, your submission is more powerful than your resistance. Our submission to God is more powerful than our resistance. The Bible says, submit to God, period. That was the end of a thought. Wasn't no comma there. It's not a semicolon there. It wasn't no run on. Submit, therefore, to God. Then, as an additional thought, I will tell you to resist the devil and he will flee from you. I want to unpack this for you in case you missed it. If we lack submission, our resistance will not last long. There is a power we access in our submission that would empower our resistance to all forms of evil. Trying to implement resistance without submission is futile. 
That's why I submit to God is first and resist the devil is second. If you don't have a submission, you will not have no resistance. Even though resistance is the right posture to all forms of evil, it will prove to be ineffective. I'm about to give you context for why you're going through what you're going through and the struggle that you've been dealing with. Even though resistance is the proper stance and posture against all forms of evil, it will prove to be ineffective if it's not backed by submission to the Father. All right? You're going to have to get with me on this. See, we have been raised up to embrace and be bold and audacious and resist the devil and let her kataya and all that. Like we believe in all of that. We do all of that. You need all of that. But guess what? You do all of that after you've got up off of your face. Or else you'll be like one shadow box and beating the air. Dry mouth. Dizzy. I done about busted a blood vessel praying so hard one day. I mean that. I want you to see something that's so powerful. See, because apostle, I really believe this. The greatest transition of this generation is going to be making the transition from church into the kingdom. This generation knows church well. But we know very little as it pertains to the kingdom of God. And many will unfortunately not make the transition. And they'll be as a generation who dies in the wilderness. Whom God intended to bring into a place of promise. He brought you out to bring you in too. Bro, don't die on the way. If you would just submit, you'll be able to see. You know, Jesus was helping the disciples so that they wouldn't lose track over in Luke chapter 10 and verse 17. It says, then the 70, they returned back with great joy because they had a successful meeting, right? They, they were successful in the assignment that Jesus gave unto them. He told them, I want you to go into these villages over against us in every place where I'll begin to come. In Luke chapter 10, he said, I want you as you go to cast out devils, heal the sick, and to raise the dead. And they came back rejoicing, letting us know that they were faithful to the assignment of Casting out devils, healing the sick, and raising the dead, right? And they came back just rejoicing because what was so powerful was the fact, the same thing that the scribes and the Pharisees were enamored with. They said that this man teaches as one who has authority. They recognized the authority that was operating in Jesus as he teaches. And they said because even as he speak, demons obey him. See, when you begin to walk in real authority, you don't even got to raise your voice. I got four kids. Thank you. Just pray for me. But because they know when I'm not playing, I can say, Elijah, that's enough. I don't even got to say no more. And guess what? It's the end of that. See, the proof that you don't really have authority or that it's not honored is going to require the exertion of a lot more effort and force to demonstrate that you are the greater. You know what I mean? But when you walk in real authority, you don't even got to raise your voice. Jesus would say, shut up and come out. See, these delivering sessions, and I have to tell people all the time, I say, listen, I'm not about to be here with you for six hours. Because your devil may got power over you, but he ain't got power over me. And I got more power than him. And listen, we're going to do this real quick. And if you will come into alignment with your faith and submission to the word of God, it's going to work for you. And it ain't going to take all night. Jesus was crucified over 2,000 years ago. to rem And guess what? His fight still defends those who are submitted to his word. I said his fight still defends those who are submitted to his word. So in Luke 10 and 17, the Bible said, and the 70 returned back with great joy, saying, Lord, even demons are what? They are subject. They're subject unto us. 
This is a very powerful kingdom principle revealed here. And it's very simple that demonic powers will be subject to you to the degree that you are subject to Jesus. Write that one down. I don't just want that that was good. I agree with that. See, because if you're still struggling with devils next week, you celebrated the point, but it didn't sink in. When we are rightfully submitted, guess what? Everything in the kingdom of darkness is subject unto us. I'm trying to teach you how to really walk out authority and not just have authority by way of conversation, but have the kind of authority that shows up every single day at your job that you don't even have to wrestle with them devils at the water cooler and deal with the other stuff from your unsaved managers. I'm trying to show you how you can have a higher position, but guess what? I walk in a greater power. This has always been a biblical template. I don't even need your position because my, my posture is before God. And every Pharaoh needs a Joseph. I bring indescribable value to my company. And they honor that. And they'll begin to recognize that. But guess what? It's because in the realm of the spirit I settled my day. I established success in prayer. And then I just have the privilege of walking it out as I go along throughout the day. Don't be upset about the day that you didn't spend time praying for and bringing under the auspices of prayer. Hear this. Because we're under authority, and I don't have time to go over to the Roman centurion who Jesus acknowledged had so great a faith. But when we are under authority, we'll be crowned with it and we can move in it. But you have to understand that authority only works for those who are submitted to it. You have to hear this. You have to hear this because I'm telling you, it's the disconnect. Because the spirit of, just a, of, the spirit of this age is working against biblical and kingdom submission. But listen, you can't access an inheritance that you have not become up under. Listen, you better realize that the greatest thing that God could ever give to you is a God-fearing father. Because guess what? He leaves, a good father leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Do you realize we can ride on the waves that apostle is already established. Like, guess what? He's plowing the way. He's dealing with all the things that are before us, right? He's blazing the path. He's charting the course. And guess what? We're able to just walk through like a walk in the park. And here he is, a step plowing in this thing, right? But guess what? He's established an inheritance for us. But it can only be accessed by honor. See, that's why the Bible says that a prophet, um, when you honor a prophet in the name of a prophet, you'll receive a prophet's reward. What does that basically mean? That basically when a prophet is in your company, guess what? If you fail to honor them for who God has called them to be, guess what? What they were meant to bring into your life will shut down for you. It don't mean that they weren't anointed. It just said they weren't anointed for you because you lacked the honor. So there was no release there. And see, people, uh, they, they, I don't want to get started on that. But listen, the absence of honor, God will stop a release. The Bible said Jesus was in a place and the power of God was present to heal them. But they were not healed because they seen him as the carpenter and not as the Christ. And many times we've made the mistake of missing the Christ because we're familiar with the carpenter and we talk about man... Now, who is he again? Ain't nothing special about him. Ain't that she, she ain't all that. They don't got that big of a following. They ain't got this. But when you honor them properly, 
you'll be able to access everything they possess. I'm trying to tell you this. See, because the enemy would want you to hear submission as a form of suppression. He wants to keep you down. But listen to this. I, and here's the crux of this, and I'm not even going to have the ability to deal with it in, total, in totality. But Romans 8, 6 to 8. Anytime you go to this passage of scripture, you get in deep theological trenches. But Romans 8, 6 to 8, I'm going to help you because I believe that God is going to use you to etch your name in a place of great significance as it pertains to this generation. He's going to use you mightily. Somebody say me. He's talking to me. Romans 8, 6 to 8 says this, to be, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. These are scriptures we don't even hear no more. But it's okay because they're still there. <laughs> because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor what? Neither or nor indeed can it be. So then they, don't be mad at me, so then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. I want to help you because the absence of submission will leave you stranded. But I am coming to get you out of this place that you've been in. Because whenever you learn to yield and surrender, God will begin to remove the struggle out of your life. I'm about to help you realize while you have been struggling. Listen, when you are carnal, it talks about the carnal, right? And the carnal means that they live their life governed by their own fleshly dictates and desires, right? I want to let you know how, how grievous of offense this is. Because when you're carnal, the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, because you're carnal, and it's not, I'm not talking to you directly, but I'm talking to you whenever you operate in carnality. I am talking to you. I want you to be clear. But listen, when you're carnal, the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, they must first get permission from your flesh before there's compliance. When you are carnal, God has to get permission from your flesh before there is compliance. We yield only to that which is palatable to our flesh before we begin to comply. So what happens is we begin to not be made in the image and the likeness of God but we only begin to read, study, confess, and pray scriptures that are uh, in conformity to our personal aspirations. But I want you to know this. You will never be able to move in authentic authority for your personal ambitions. God will not co-sign on what he has not authorized. You want to know why? Those decrees ain't working for you right now? You want to know why? You prayed till you blew in the face and ain't seen it yet? Many people are weary in this season because they're giving themselves to things in which God has not dispensed and released grace for. See, but we got to learn how to become one in heart with what God is doing, right? We got to learn how to begin to... Make our way over to the place and operate out of this posture of doing only what I've seen my father do. I'm trying to help you. I'm going somewhere, I promise. See, because what happens is whenever we do it the other way, instead of us being made in the image and likeness of God, we try to make God in our image. And we take prophecies, we take words, we take scriptures to back our own personal worldview instead of allowing ourselves to be changed and transformed into the image and likeness of God. Amen, somebody. Amen. So we take scriptures that support what we already believe. Bible don't say nothing about smoking no weed. 
Oh, you done searched it? You missed a few other critical ones. I want to say this really quickly. It ought not be. But there must be a premeditated submission to all things God breathed. Now, this is what submission is. Submission in my last few minutes. It is a premeditated posture, Joe, that says, God, I will submit to whatever you say, even if it do not feel good, because you alone have the words of life. I don't have a rebuttal. I don't fight. I don't challenge it. I don't even try to talk myself out of it. Guess what? If I read it and didn't like it, I still yield to it. I don't know what kind of generation of believers this is, but like I, when I read it, apart, I yield to it. It's still his word. He's not asking for opinion. Kings don't ask for opinion. They don't take polls. They don't even give suggestions. They give decrees. Be ye holy. Be ye transformed. Be ye made whole. Like the absence of honor and humility is what stalls the speedy work that God is wanting to do in our life. The absence of honor and humility is what stalls the speedy word. We all prophesy that word. God's going to do a speedy work. Before it spring forth, can a nation be born in a day? Before it spring forth, God will begin to do it in your life. He's going to do a quick work fast and, and all this other stuff. But I'm telling you this, that in the absence of submission, the speedy work that God desires to manifest will be stalled. I'm just going to read this note really quickly. Because a lot of people have been struggling in this season. They felt burnt out. They felt fatigued they felt tired and watch this because they've been wrestling with God while all the while calling it warfare in his mercy Jacob he is wrestling with you in his mercy he didn't just leave you how you were in his mercy he is using his grace to bring you into the place. See, because in the absence of submission, Holy Spirit got to strap you down and do what God is wanting to do in your life. He got to cause the ship to sink, Jonah. He got to cause and then reinforce the waves to beat against the boat. In the absence of submission, you've been fatigued thinking you're fighting devils. But because the absence of submission, God is trying his best to get you to the place he's called you to. Submission. See, you've been struggling trying to climb your industry, climb that mountain, climb that hill, when God is going to use submission to be the seat that treats you like a ski lift. Submission becomes a ski lift. I want you to know this. Because it's important for us in this generation to get this. God gave me this word. And it's not, it's not like, I told apostle, I said, apostle, the Lord gave me a hard word. This ain't even the kind of word I teach, preach. But it's the word that I'm submitted and have to release because it's the word that you need to get you to the place that God has desired for you to go. The Bible tells us this in Jude chapter 11. Go not in the way of Cain. Jude 11. Go not in the way of Cain. What did Cain do? Cain, he resisted the grace that God was releasing Genesis 4, 6, and 7 says this, and the Lord said unto Cain, why are you so upset? Why are you downcast? What's up with your wrath? Why is your countenance falling? If thou doest what is right, will I not receive you also? He said, but wait a minute. I want you to know that sin is knocking at your door, but you should have rule over it. Amen. 
He said, if you would just repent and realign yourself, will I not give you, receive with the same honor the, the way I engaged Abel? Cain had the same opportunity because God was wanting to do in the life of Cain what he was doing in the life of Abel. But guess what? He resisted the grace. Cain resisted the grace that was meant to accelerate his life. When submission is lacking, the speedy and the sudden workings of God will be stalled. Submission gives right for God to move at the speed of the supernatural. Submission gives right for God to move at the speed of the supernatural. I know you've been praying for your marriage, and I promise you it doesn't take God that long to get from heaven to Chicago, but submission enables God to move at the speed of the supernatural. The supernatural always follows closely on the heels of those who walk in submission. And I'm not just here. Apostle didn't text me, ask me, hey, Apostle, come up here and deal with submission. I got some cats I want to put in a chokehold and kick over and knock down. All and do all. He, no, 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 no. He didn't tell me that. He didn't tell me none of that. I'm, so I'm not here, but it's important that you realize that your, re your resistance to evil is not your greatest issue. See, many people have deemed the warfare that they're in and God not moving on the premise that the devils that they're facing are so powerful. No, it's the fact that your resistance will never be strong when your submission is weak. I got three minutes, so I, I got to give it to you how it come. I can't even jazz it up. Like, but when your submission is weak, your resistance cannot be strong. You want to know how to deal with the perversion in your life? I know it ain't nobody in here dealing with it, but I'm going to give you this to give to your cousin who's dealing with it down the street. You want to overcome smoking and drinking and all this other stuff in your life? Do you realize that there's a strong strength of God that comes to those who simply just have a greater and a deeper, more sincere yes to Jesus? Do you realize that there is a power? You got more power in a greater and a more sincere submission and surrender to Jesus than you do in your tabrabakas against the devil? See, whenever your heart is so knit, prophet, to the heart of God, and you become passionate what he's passionate about, you become fervent to the degree in which he is fervent. You love what he loves. Guess what? You'll start feeling about seeing how he feels about sin. Because he don't struggle with it. You won't struggle with it. We have to be like David. And we have, to have, we have to allow truth to have its full work in what? In our inward parts. God told me, he said, son, he said, whenever you allow truth to have a full work in your inward parts, I will do wonders in the uttermost parts. We all pray, prophesy that Acts 1 and 8. Terry, ye here until you be subdued with power from on high. And after this, I shall make you my witnesses in Judea, Samaria, in the uttermost parts of the earth, right? But the absence of surrender will keep you local. When God got a global mandate on your life, your influence will be local, your voice will be local, your reach will be local, and your mandate is global. Because the eyes of God are always going to and fro throughout the earth seeking to show himself strong on behalf of those, what? Whose heart is perfect towards them. God is always looking to pull somebody from on the backside of the desert or out of the sheep cope and make them a ruler over nations. But he doesn't check the same qualifications that Apple is checking for. That AIG is checking for. That any of these other Fortune 500 companies are checking for. Like he had to tell the beloved Samuel, 
I don't judge with the seeing of my eyes nor the hearing of my ears, but my judgment is righteous, for I judge and I try the heart of man. What I want you to realize is that the Lord is always looking to take those whose hearts are perfectly submitted to him. Remove the fight. See, this generation has a hard time seeing Christ because we haven't done the best job at modeling him well. Let's just be honest. Like, I know they criticize you. I know they lie on you. I know they do all of that other stuff. But guess what? Some of us warranted. All of us not. But here's what I'm saying. You want to begin to walk in such a manner that your lifestyle will begin to demonstrate the characters of Christ in which your gainsayers will have nothing to say. Submission is what unlocks speed in the spirit. Submission is what's going to activate acceleration in your life. God is going to take you places. I want you to know this. Because God is going to use you. And the struggle you've been dealing with is going to be removed when you learn to submit. Submit to God. Submit to God. Failure to submit leads to struggling in life. Last point right here. Because if there's issues with your submission, there will be limitations with your resistance. I don't want you to miss this. More important than your strength in war is the posture of your heart in worship. David's strength did not come from his natural physique or else Goliath wouldn't have laughed when he came out there. But his strength was concealed. And I just want you to know, beloved, stand to your feet, that when your submission is without question, you'll move in authority without pushback. When your submission is without question, you'll move in authority without pushback. There's so many things that God is wanting to activate in your life, but guess what? And he's wanting to awaken the authority that he's put on your life. But guess what? It's going to require surrender. Like, I'm going to tell you this. Because this generation, like, going, like, if, if this was the pool of sin, they like getting all the way up on the edge to see how much I can get away with without falling in like you know certain stuff you just shouldn't be watching the Bible said that a wise man see if danger from afar he goeth another way guess what let a posture ask God to create a premeditated posture in you to just say yes I want to feel how you feel about people. Just because you're mad at them don't change how God feels about them. You know who you think you are. We want to see things how Jesus sees them. We want to share sentiments. We want to be able to see those who are struggling in areas and see the redemptive value of God in their lives. And call that out. Everybody can see they on crack. Everybody can see they struggling in their sexuality. Everybody can see they like, tell me what's not as obvious. Tell me, prophet, the heart of God in his mind when he originally shaped and molded them and crafted them. Because they are indeed the very workmanship of God. Father, we... We yield to the dealings of God. Soberly. Not out of excitement. Not out of pump. Not out of hype. I make a sober decision. I make a very deliberate decision today. That every area of my life that's been uncircumcised. Unyielded. I lay before you today. I ask for you to do a supernatural work in my heart because I know it will not take place around me 
until I submit to the work you're doing within me. We welcome your surgical dealings in our life. Our posture is to yield without fight. We yield, Lord, without hesitation and struggle, Lord. You won't have to struggle with us. There's a willful yes and submission in our lives. We willfully surrender today. Not for the sake of being exalted, but we know, Lord, while you resist the proud, you give grace to the humble. And we pray even to access that supernatural virtue of grace, Lord, to begin to perform deep, deep work in our own heart. I'm not looking to my left, I'm not looking to my right. I'm looking within. And I need you to purify my palate of every pervasive and perverse appetite God that has been lingering in my life that has been hindering me from moving at the speed of heaven I've been moving too slow I need to begin to follow you close we respond to the invitation to be close to you tonight today we respond to the invitation to draw nigh unto you we respond to be right up on your heels and if you even make space to be in your lap let our head rest upon your chest that we may hear your thoughts Lord in this season we surrender we die to everything that's been trying to kill who you have created us to be let a deeper work hit our life Lord a deeper work we abandon the superficial places of surrender in compliance and yieldedness and we ask that you would deal with us take the sword of your word the very piercing portion of your word and deal with us completely uprooted Lord the only thing that's left is you and we ask this Father in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we surrender we drop our stones, we put down our weapons, we come down off the horse. We don't need another catastrophe, we don't need another pandemic, we don't need no more strife in our marriage, we don't need no more attacks on our body, we don't need no more issues from our kids, we don't need to be fired another time. Lord, we hear you now. We hear you now. And we surrender, Father, in Jesus' name. Come on, lift your hands, people of God. Jesus, we submit all to you. And we ask you this day to have your way in us. We submit all to you, Jesus. Have your way in the heart of this people, Lord. We surrender to you. Have your way in the heart of this people, Lord. We surrender to you. We surrender, God. We give you all of us. We say yes to you. We say yes to you. I surrender my heart to you. Have your way. Just go ahead and give the Lord your surrender. Come on, there's some things in your mind. Keep singing. In your heart, God just needs you to verbalize it. I surrender the rebellion, the pride, the entitlement, the self-importance, the resistance to your plans, the resistance to your calling, 
the resistance to your draw. I surrender, thinking more highly of myself than I ought to think. God, I surrender. Have your way in me. Have your way in me. We're going to shift this service. I heard three things, and we're going to make an altar call because you need to respond. Brokenness, yieldedness, and a swift response. We can be vulnerable in the hands of our Father. Church, after the order of man, has become a platform for competition in a dog eat dog world because there's a lack of submission to Him. But when an individual's heart is broken before God and there's a genuine transparency and our lives are translucent, he can see in us and see through us. That's when breakthrough comes. And the Father wants to take the struggle out of us pretending to be who we're not, but release grace for you to be the unique individual that you are, of which no one else on the planet has the distinct privilege of being. If you're here, this is not a sin issue. This is a surrender issue. And you've struggled with like, man, God, I know I'm called to greatness. And I got my own ideas and I follow my own plans to the path of greatness. But they've made me unfaithful, unstable, inconsistent. So I need to give this to you so that the greatness you've ordained can now take precedent. Or if it's an, it's an idea and you know it's a God idea. But you can't seem to find the right fit in your life so that the Father can facilitate what you need. Or if you're just struggling in the area of compliance. You're not rebelling on purpose. You have genuine resistance because of a submission issue. And you heard wisdom today from the Word of God that rendered a measure of conviction. I want you to come. Don't wait to see who's coming. I want you to come so you can receive. Come so you can receive. Apostle, just pray a general prayer. Hallelujah, Lord. We just thank you for every person who's had a heart to respond. We thank you, Father, for you're going to do great things even through our response, Father. They've made the decision. They've walked forward, Father. And we just declare that there is a prophetic momentum coming upon them, Lord, that you will begin to respond to those who have responded to your word on today, Father. And you will begin to break every place that's unyielded, that's unsubmitted, Father, in the name of Jesus, that's been inconsistent, Lord. And I thank you, Father, that there's going to be a release of a readiness to respond, that we would have an vengeance to respond avenge all manner of disobedience Father in the name of Jesus that we would through the partnering with the Holy Spirit Father God that we would bring every thought captive unto the obedience of Christ in the name of Jesus we will be slow to speak but we will be quick to respond quick to repent quick to obey quick to walk out what you've unctioned in order for us Lord in the name of Jesus there's a speed coming to the obedience of your people and we thank you Father that you will begin to meet it with supernatural demonstrations of your power of your grace of your glory it is coming upon 